I do think it's important that we, t we begin to think of a continuum of restorativeness. Like, I think it's very important to say that there are some efforts that we will, will truly be restorative by most of our criteria, and there's some things that are not. But in the middle, there is a continuum that I think is important, and that has on it the mostly restorative and the potentially restorative. And let me just give you an example. Our victim impact panels. I think are very important things to do. When they're done right, they're powerful for both victims and offenders. They are not really fully restorative justice, but they are essential in a restorative justice system or approach. They're partly restorative, they're totally legitimate, but it's inaccurate to call them restorative justice probably. And so I think we need to come up with a language that helps us be a little bit more nuanced about where these things fit and not make people feel bad who aren't doing a fully restorative justice program. Uh, New Zealand is unique in that one of the principles of their principled practice is that the process is supposed to be culturally appropriate. And it is a coordinator's job to negotiate with those parties to give them the process they want. It's not supposed to be a cookie cutter process. There's the whole question of shame, as I mentioned yesterday, and we've had a session at least on this. Bria has done a lot of work on this. Uh, lots and lots of, I mean, shame has a huge analytic power for understanding both victims and offender, I think. But there's lots and lots of concerns about people getting the wrong message and actively imposing shame in conferences. And then that's one, and this related one is whether they're providing adequate ways to remove or transform that shame uh, afterwards. And that has gotten mixed with issues around when authority figures are doing the facilitation and authority figures tend to just by nature to use shame a little more and, then, and that kind of thing. So it's been also mixed in with the issue about who's doing this. I think respect is the fundamental value of restorative justice. If I have to define ju restorative justice in a word, it's respect. Uh, I think if you, we do justice respectfully, we are doing restorative justice. I'm, I'm convinced that issues of respect and disrespect are at the heart of much offending. I'm convinced that issues of respect and disrespect are at the heart of much victim trauma. And I'm convinced that the bad experiences that victims and offenders both seem to have at the hands of justice so often have to do with issues of respect and disrespect. So I think respect is very important. When victims want revenge, sometimes it's because they haven't been vindicated in other ways. Revenge is one form of sort of a vindication. Um, there's another dimension to vindication which I am trying to understand, but I think it has to do with honor and humiliation. I am, con you know, in Western society, we think we have eliminated issues of honor and humiliation from our, you know, those, those codes of honor were true of the Norsemen, you know, and so forth. They're not true of us. Well, let me tell you, I am convinced that a lot of wrongdoing and a lot of victim experiences has to do with honor and humiliation. And I think part of what the, the journey that victims make is that make that that journey from humiliation, the humiliation they have felt at the hands of an offender, the humiliation they feel at the way they've behaved, the humiliation they feel made to be feel by other people, and the journey to turn that into stories of honor. Uh, I think it also has a lot to say about offenders' behavior. So I think this vindication concept is an important one as we talk about strategies. I mean, we do we knew, do need a kind of vindication. Society needs that, victims need that, but we need to find more positive and healthier ways to do that. Restorative justice is very postmodern in a lot of ways. We realize that the truth for people is contextual. It depends on individuals and their situations. And we need to realize that everything we know is filtered through the limits of who we are, our biography, our gender, our ethnic background, our experiences, all those things affect it. And what I think I know may, may be good for me, but it won't be good necessarily for somebody else. So I think, it's, I think this sense of recognizing the limits of what we know is very important. Do we need a definition? There, has been many, there have been many efforts, including here in Canada, to get a definition or a consensus of what restorative justice is, and yet it's so hard to do. Do we need that or not? Um, another issue related to that is to where do values fit in? I think a major deficiency in the way I've been articulating restorative justice is that I've focused on principles, not explicitly enough on values. And if you could follow the principles of restorative justice, probably, and still do some terrible things, if it's not grounded explicitly in values. And so I think we need to do a lot more work 
I have some ideas about what those key values ought to be, but I think we need to do a lot more work about that. There's a lots and lots of questions around what we might call indigenous just, traditional justice and restorative justice. Questions about whether, to what extent we're expropriating and distorting or romanticizing traditions. Uh, we can go into that if you want, but there's just a huge number of very important questions around that. And then there's some really interesting questions around spirituality and restorative justice. More and more people have been begun, including some who are not, would not describe themselves inherently religious, they're describing restorative justice as a spiritual process. Now, what do you do when a state's running a program that has this kind of overlay to it? How do you handle that? How do you talk about it? Um, then some of my students have been giving me a really hard time on this whole question of to what extent are we addressing social justice? If we're just focusing on things like criminal justice and we do that by focusing on a victim and offender, are we just individualizing problems just like the criminal justice system does? The criminal justice system takes a problem, a, a harm or a conflict that has a social and economic political dimensions to it and boils it down to someone chose to do this to somebody else. Are we doing the same thing? Or what is our responsibility to take restorative justice to a larger justice theory of social justice?